Hi, and welcome to the channel. Um, on the desk today, we have a Blu ray player. It has the Panasonic SABT230. Um, had this a while ago, um, tried to fix it. It was coming up with error codes on the display. Didn't manage to fix it, but I'll leave these things laying around because as you learn more and more about electronic stuff, I think I'll have another look at this when I've got a spare five minutes. And today is that day. So we've just been taking it apart and looking at it again. Now previously, um, looked up online, I think this had the error code of F61 or F76. Um, a lot of them say it's just a couple of capacitors. There's one hiding under this side under the heatsink. And there was one other somewhere else as well. I'm not too sure. I'll have a look. I'll look them up and see what they are in there. Um, right, let's get a lead and plug this in. Let's see if it's still doing the same stuff. Alright, so I've just got the power jack hanging loose here because I've never put it back together properly yet. Be careful, it isn't plugged in yet. You don't want to be touching any of this stuff while it's open because you will be electrocuted. Right, so I'm just going to flick that on. The power mains. Heard it buzz and the fan spin. Right, let's turn this on. Need to leave this connected because this has got the power button in it. Right now, see this is a trouble I was having before. I'm not sure if you can see that. There, right, that is now flashing up, please wait. This is a trouble I was having before. I change these two caps and it sits on please wait for an eternity. I'm gonna leave that for a few minutes just to show you how to speed this bit up. I just noticed my mic wasn't recording, so sorry if the first part was a bit Sound quality weren't that great. Should be better now. Ah, so there we go. Usually this would have booted up by now. It's only a Blu-ray player. There's nothing. There's nothing special in here, apart from a little iPod dock, which is the old star one. Now, if I press open on the door, it's got open, closed. We've got nothing going on the DVD. Got nothing working there. So that's it. So still got no errors on the display. Right now, let's. I'm going to hold my finger down on the power button just to shut this down. I think it's about ten seconds. It should force it to turn off. Right, that's off. And it's done a few little clicks there. Now, if I try and turn it on again. And that's here we go this is when it's has problems turns off I'm not sure if we can see that on there it is turning on and off turn the light off so you can see it a bit better so you've got please wait and it flashes up f76 really quickly and goes off so it looks like it's still got a problem with the power it's got a power issue problem why it doesn't come on again and sit on please wait i don't know Right, so we're going to unplug this, turn it off the switch, pull the plug out. Can't emphasize that enough because if you touch these points here with the plug still on, then you are going to be electrocuted and have a big old electric shock. And it could kill you. Oh, so I must say, don't copy me on, on what I'm doing here. I am just learning myself as I go along. This is why I've kept this. As I do more stuff, I enjoy trying to fix this. This isn't sort of part of my job to me. I enjoy trying to fix stuff. This isn't going to be resold on eBay because the bottom part is smashed open. But I'm going to keep this. If I get this working, I'll keep this as my test unit and see how the good unit I've got that use for testing at the moment. Right, so I've already got the screws out of here from when I've had it apart before. It has got a little plastic lug down here you need to push in to be able to pull the board out that's it and again be very careful because some of these capacitors on it can still hold a big charge in them so you don't want to be touching anything on the board yet i need to flip this over let me just put the front panel back over here 
like so. Now I'm just going to take this board out without touching anything. You're safe from touching a heat sink because that's not really going to do anything. And grab it by the outside of the board. Right, so we're just going to flip that over so we can get to the bottom of it. Bring a multimeter in a second. I just want to check. There is a big cap in the middle of that. I want to check there's no voltage on that still. Not sure if you can see that. I was reading three volts in there. Three volts, that's not too bad. Right, now when we look online, looked online before and it says a lot of people say to change this capacitor that is under the heat sink. It's this little one down in here, which is, if I can see it, I can't because it's facing the other way. I can't remember what that capacitor was. I think it's like a what is it? There it is. Um, it's a 100 volt 10 microfarad. So that is already one. So that is one I've already replaced in there. Yeah, so that capacitor is marked up. Uh, do, 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 where is it? That one. C7, um, C5726. And where's the other one? They also mention. So when you look up other people like they've replaced the C5726 and the C5798. They've replaced them caps and which is and they it's them work. So that's the C5726. Where's the C5798? I can't remember which one it was. Let's just have a look on this side. It's safe to touch this now because we know there's no volts in the caps there's one of those two down there yeah there it is the C5798 uh, I can't remember if I replaced them I just took them out of the board and tested them I think they were testing okay so really I wanted to try and test the voltages on this but every time it flashes up with that error you can't test it. Let's see if we can turn it on now. No, see it's turning on and off again. No, I did manage to go online and find some like schematics and stuff for this. Let me turn that up off because I nearly put my hand on there then. Always remember to turn this off. Because if you put your hand there, you're going to go bang. Right, now they they do have, on the schematics, they have a troubleshooting guide for F61 and F76 and we can see F76 flashing on the screen. So we got here the set can turn on and then F36. So it gives you some reasons. So it could be the transformer. It's not usually the transformer. The transformer is usually fine. And then it's ten, telling you to look at the power PCB. Um, so it's basically check your connections between certain things which are you know your, your socketed connections down there saying your L2902 which is like that's like an inductor saying there's no input to the IC but that's not open that's fine and this basically just says about your regulators and your inductors and um, 40 ICs or a photocoupler which is no good doesn't really help me out. There's nothing wrong with the inductors. The inductors aren't open. They're all fine. So even the troubleshooting guide doesn't really help me that much. So another one we got here, you're not going to be able to see this because it's absolutely tiny. I've got one here that tells you what all the voltages should be on these connectors. So that's a JW2 connector. So you've got a power line there. I think that's the I think these two detect 
the power is and if it's power's not going to the right place it brings it down not too sure so there we can see we've got we should have DC 18 volts DC 12 volts yeah we've got a couple of grounds we've got a 5 volt there not sure about system 6 6 volts and a sink so we want, really want to see it. we want to make sure we've got our 18 volts 12 volts and 5 volts and we've also got this one that's going to the power circuit which is 5 volts no one to the power circuit that's 12 volts and 18 volts and you've got one going to your amp circuit which is 51 volts is there any, uh, two pluses yes yeah, so you've got your plus 51 volts on those two and uh, 13 volts going to the fan so our JW2 socket is over this side so you can read that on there that says JW2 and it's even got your pins marked so that's one there and that's 10 down the end so if we look on here we can see what pin should have voltage so 4 should be 5 volts 7 is 12 volts 8 is 18 volts now, the trouble is now though the unit isn't going to stay on let me turn it back on its switch try and press a button and then no it's clicking on and off now so just going to shove my ground lead on a ground point which is that shield is a good ground point uh, got my voltage on DC on the multimeter hopefully you can see that so what was it four seven and eight so four is a five volts that's not going to stay on even one volt in a minute that does flash up to five volts and stays on five volts so pin seven is it seven yes yeah, so it's pin seven should be getting 12 volts and we're not pin eight we should be getting 18 volts it's popping up to 11 so it's not really getting the um, voltages in there let's see what this cap um, let's see what the capacitor we replace goes up to we've got 8 volts at the minute so that's nearly getting up to 18 volts so that should be good and the other capacitor we changed was over here so you don't want to slip with these while the power's in there sure whether we're getting anything over there so we're not getting one of our voltages which is why it's shutting down so I've turned it back off of the plug again don't want to be touching this right now looking at all of our caps on this board everything seems to look all right let's see let's just check that big capacitor what that's getting up to Is this holding any charge or doing anything? That sounds six volts there. Head on there. All right, let's just turn the power back on. So that sound is thirty volts in there. What? It's just as soon as you turn the power on. That is jumping up to 200 odd volts. That is discharging very, very quickly. Fifty volts down to thirty. All right. Let's just go to capacitance. I'm just gonna test some of the capacitors on the board. So these are ones we've already changed. Now you don't usually get when you put your capacitance on. You don't usually get a reading 
And that one is reading 10 microfarads, which it is. A lot of times you don't really get good readings off here when you're measuring it in circuit. I've got it all switched off again. Yeah, see that's more like it, it goes to the mega farads, 2.6 mega farads, farad size. It's useless. So I want to check this big cap because that is this big capacitor is losing voltage very quickly, and that is coming up as nanofarads. 100 nanofarads and jumping around. So yeah, that is a negative terminal. Well, that shouldn't matter with these. So actually, that big capacitor is measuring wrong. Usually, if usually when you're measuring stuff in circuit, like let's go on to one of these bigger capacitors over here. Well, one, let's go on this other one we replaced. Right, let's put that on there. See, that's 10 microfarads there. Which one is that big one? They've got two big ones in here. 63 volts, 1000 microfarads. So that's going to be these caps. And these pins down here. See again, we're going into the microfarads, um, the megafarads, 3.5 mega, which is usually right because it's all your other capacitance on the board. It can't read your capacitors correctly in board, so it usually goes into the mega. So look at that big cap. I don't think that big cap is holding its. I don't think this big one is getting the right voltage. It's not domed. Doesn't look like it's leaked anywhere. Right, we've got the power turned off still. Right, so although I have just been like stumbling around in the dark a bit, I think I've just come across why this is not working. I'm going to take it out the board and check it. So we've got that, this big cap down in here which is the main cap filter, so it comes through the transformer and goes through this capacitor to smooth it out. And that is 400 volts, 180 microfarads. So I'm gonna get that. Let's turn the solder on, I'm gonna get this out of the board and test that one. Because I would imagine that one should be reading a lot higher. I think we have maybe just stumbled across what cap this is that's gone. Right, and this cap is the C5712. Mm. You're going to put a bit of flux around here. Looks a bit crusty around there as well. Right, let's get the solder sucker ready. Right, zoom in a bit so you can see which one I'm working on. So this one here. Let's get all that get all that warmed up and melted first. Put my iron set to 400 because this is quite chunky. came off nice. Right, okay, that came off 
not too bad. And slid that out. Right, so there we have it. That is our cap. Ow! That is there, our 400 volt, 180 microfarad. Right, let's test that. Should have tested the voltage on it first. Uh, let's zoom out a bit so you can see. Right, we're going to DC, negative to negative. Yes, we've got no voltage in there anyway. Right, so there's no voltage in there, but we'll short that out just to make sure it is totally empty. Right, microfarads on our capacitance reading. Wedge these in here. 13 nanofarads. Hopefully, you can see that. 13.9, nearly 14 nanofarads. So that capacitor is knackered. What if we go on to resistance? Put my these together, the reading zero. Oh well, reading open. How's it meant to do that? Uh, right, I need to find one of them. 400 volts, 180 microfarads. So if I've got any of them laying around, which I probably haven't. Well, I found an old power board here, because I never throw stuff away. I always save stuff. And on here, we have a 450 volt, 150 microfarads. Now, usually you would replace it like for like. Um, on the microfarad side of things. So that's a 180. This is only a 150. Uh, they're very similar colored looking cat. Are they the same make? Sam Young. No. That's a Nippon. It's a Sam Young. But yeah, but you'd usually try and match it exactly the same. But 150 isn't far away from 180. It's not that much difference. Our voltage is higher, so I'm going to get this one off of this board and put it in there. That should be good enough. And that should do the job. Right, let's get that one out of there. I think that is just falling straight through. There we have it. They're safe to work on because that has been sat there for God knows how long. But if you're taking one off another board, just double check. Make sure there's no volts in it. Nine millivolts. So, yeah, absolutely empty. Right, so now we're going to get this cap in the board. Make sure your polarity is round the right way. It's written on the board. We've got our plus that side, our minus this side. Make sure that's nicely through the holes properly there. Right. Just, to, just to hold it in place for me, I'm just going to get a bit of solder on the um, iron. And just like tack that in place for a second. get that back on there probably. Actually before I um, solder that on <laughs> properly I should have checked the microfads. I don't even know if this one works. So right this leg's not connected at the moment so it should give me a good reading. Hundred and forty three microfarads so yeah that's within tolerance. So that is fine. Right, so let's get our leaded solder onto here. Let's warm the pin up and the board up. Flow a nice lump of solder into that. Fill it up. Beautiful. And then we only sort of tack this. But heat it up. Let it flow. And we're on.
Right, a bit of isopropyl alcohol on the board. Just clean up some of this flux. Clean up all the other areas actually that I did before and didn't clean them after myself. Didn't clean it up because it never worked. Plug it back in, power's off, don't want that touching anything. Turn it back on. Hit the power switch. It's on and I can hear a DVD tray which never worked before. Let's have a quick look to see if we can see what's on the front. And we have Hello. So we can see that we've got hello dn1 so it's on and it's staying on i think we have found our culprit and fixed this but anyway just look at our voltages again going on to dc uh, so what was it pin four i think was our five volts was it Yep, 5 volts on pin 4. Pin 7, we should have had 12. Was it? That's still not reading 12. Oh no, that's 7. So yeah, that's pin 7, that's like 11.5 volts. Pin 8, we got 23 volts. I'm sure that said it should only be 18. We've got 2.8 volts up. Got 3 volts down the end, 2.5 volts. So that's a bit high. Let's see what our capacitor is doing. This big one we just replaced. Holding steady at 319. Oh, Jesus, don't slip with it when it's on. Three hundred and twenty volts, three hundred and nineteen volts, and stable. So that was only getting a, th a thirty volts before, wasn't it? So that is looking good. Right, let's turn it off. Stick it back together. See if everything works. Yep, it says bye. Clicks off, shuts down. Right, let's turn it off at a switch. Let's put our lead out. And we'll Get this back together. Although now this is working, still want to be careful of it. Let's check our voltage on this cap. We've still got 315, 314 volts. We've still got 300 volts on that cap, so we you still want to handle this board carefully. Don't think just because you unplug something, there's no voltage left in it. Because that is going to give you a, a big old shock. So hold it right at the very, very edges. Grab the ground or something. And just be very careful that you're not touching any metal frames or anything like that. Slot that down in position. Right, let's move that out of the way. Right, let's just get this all wired back in and we'll plug it into the TV. Got all our speaker connections on there because this is actually like a, a theatre, like a 5.1 surround sound system. Theatre system that you can plug your all your speakers in there. Right, so let's turn it on. Let's just tilt it out for you so you can see. 
Please wait. Please wait. Please wait. If it does go on, please wait for a little while. Right, hello. Now, let's see if our DVD tray opens, or our Blu-ray tray. Open. Hey! And close. Right, that's working all right. Let's get a Blu-ray. Good old Hancock. Let's plug it into the TV, see if it does anything. HDMI lead. Right, let's hit the play button. Got no sound. Let's see if it's in a setting somewhere. Yeah, there we go, found it. HDMI audio output. On. Oh, there we go. That's playing. That's all working. How's the old iPod dock? Oh, stop that. Right, so there we go anyway, it is all working, seems to all be working fine, um, again another simple fix, just a capacitor, just knowing which capacitor it is, now to buy one of them, uh, larger capacitors, it's not going to cost much, probably uh, probably about a £5 maximum or something like that, so again, dirt cheap, now it was a bit of a coincidence, I come across that just by checking it, um, what I probably would have ended up doing if I didn't notice that one would be take all the caps out of that circuit and check them one by one because um, that capacitor was reading so low and it was only going up to 30 volts when I was trying to check it when I was turning the power on it gave me an indication that that was probably the capacitor that was gone because usually when you measure a cap it goes into the mega uh, the mega ferrous because it's when you check a capacitor in circuit, a lot of times, you know, it's all linked to all the other capacitors. So it's a, a mul multiplication of them all. It's like, you know, they're all included, included in that calculation. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Another simple fix. Um, please give us a like. Uh, please give us a comment. Uh, please subscribe. It's free. And um, hopefully I shall see you in the next one. Thank you.